I have a treat for you. I have somebody who was on the channel about 18, maybe 24 months ago. Somebody that I have called and will say it again, belongs on the Mount Rushmore of real estate investors, right? I put him there myself. The one and only Bill Allen from Seven Figure Flipping. How you doing, buddy? Great. I'm doing awesome. I can't, Two years ago, I can't believe it's been that long. I feel like I just blinked and we were just doing this. Yeah, exactly. It's been a while. I remember that event in San Diego, which was really, really amazing. I unfortunately had to miss the event in Miami. But uh, yeah, uh, you you are on my personal Mount Rushmore of real estate investors. So uh, anytime I get with you is a pleasure. Thank you so much. Well, I appreciate that. And now that I've been like diving in and studying YouTube, it's just like I've been watching you and a bunch of other people. So it's been amazing to kind of, I share the same sentiment. Like what you've done has been incredible. And I think people need to pay attention to that. I appreciate you. Well, we're going to dive into something that everybody needs to think about. You, again, as somebody on the Mount Rushmore Real Estate Investing has done things that even I could only dream about. And what we're going to talk about today and give the audience about is you have built an eight-figure business, not seven eight-figure business. And you have been so gracious. You've kind of pulled that all together into five key themes that we need to talk about. And I thought we could just wrap about them because I think everybody needs to appreciate them, whether you're just starting, whether you've, you've gotten one or two, or you have bigger, bigger dreams. You, you've done it. So what are the five things to, uh, to generate or create an eight-figure business in your mind, Bill? Yeah. So I, I think to start, first of all, if you if you don't have an eight figure business or you don't have a seven figure business right now, don't tune out because honestly, these are five principles. Like they're five principles and foundations that will will show success anywhere that you go. So right. anyway, it doesn't matter. So if you're just like, oh well, hey, I'm, I have a W two job and I want to start a business, this is the same thing. Um, anything that you do in your life, personally, professionally, spiritually, um, friendships, anything like that, these will work for that. So uh, hopefully that's helpful for anybody listening. Um, tune in, stay here because it's important. The first one for me is to set like very clear goals. And when I say goals, it's almost like we have a vision that we back to a goal first, the first step, like you have a vision, something that you want to do, and you got to back it to an actual goal that's more tangible. So something that's more smart, right? Specific, mm -hmm. measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. And so set a goal. And do you want me to jump into them or just listen? Yeah, well, I, well, I think, I think I'd love to give examples, right? Okay. So Let's let's rewind the clock a couple of years. What would have been one of those smart goals for Bill Allen on your journey to eight figures? Let's give him a taste. And then how'd you do? Yeah. So in the beginning, like my my goal, my first goal was to flip 12 houses in a year. Like that, that was the goal. I was like, I want to flip 12 houses. Now my vision was I want to build a business, like an actual business, like something that runs right. without me. And I that I can spend more time with my family and these kind of things. I backed it back to okay, what would that look like? Still flying active duty for the military. I was, you know, full time, 10 to 12 hours a day, one weekend a month, I was working almost nonstop right. in the military. And so mm -hmm. I said, Hey, 12 houses would bring me like four, $400,000 a year. Yeah. You know, that's a, that's a big number for me at the time. I, I, I never thought in 10 millions or even 1 million. Right. I was like, I just want to, I want to be a millionaire one day. That day's probably. And, and what year was this for you? Was this like 2015 or when was this? Yeah, this was uh this was like 2014, 20, 2015 is when I kind of like the end of 2015 is when I got pushed to this. So I was doing like okay. one house a year for for years and just getting frustrated because it would take me six months and take me six months right. to find another house. And I was just banging my head against the wall, trying to wonder why I was doing this for my family. But anytime right. I had off between work, I was at the house, <laughs> you know, and, yeah. and when I did Cross the math, current I goals. Making, yeah. yeah, I was making $12 an hour when I did the math. <laughs> it's like, ah, that's terrible. Yeah, but it was $45,000 when I got the paycheck from the house, but it was six right. months of my time. Yeah. And so you do the math, it wasn't good. No. But I didn't realize it then. I thought it was I thought it was 45 grand. And so <laughs> um, so we set clear goals and and this is a good time to talk about this, right? Where people are setting goals right now for 2023, they're trying to figure it out, what am I going to be doing? And so that was my goal, 12 houses to be like that was it. That was the start. That was it. I ended up okay. doing and the result that year was 67 houses. Oh my goodness. All yeah. Right. And, but it started, it started there because I, I couldn't even see that, that big of a vision. Right. And that's okay. You, you hear people talk about, so that's why I said in the beginning, just because we're doing 10 million a year, doesn't mean that has to be your vision right now. And that's too, probably too big for you if you're just getting started. Yeah. I just want to break apart that. Cause again, you walk into the year doing two a year or one a year, you set a goal of 12. And what happened right with that decision is you just had to act differently. You had to start streamlining and taking yourself out of the business. 
you couldn't be doing the work. You couldn't, you had to find more leads because you had to keep, you started building a machine. And then when that machine produced, it not only got to 12, it got to 67, which was game changing, I'm sure. Yeah. And before that, honestly, I had to believe that it was possible. Right. Yeah, because I had never done it. And, and I also had to, I also had to forget what I thought I knew. Oh, that's a good one. Yes. Because everybody thinks that they know what they need to do, but they don't. And I needed to be coachable. I needed to listen. I needed to forget what I thought. I needed to just remove anything that, and that's, that was probably the hardest part. That's, that's more identity stuff and belief yeah. and fear. Ego. And yeah. Yeah, ego. Yeah. And so, yeah. so I had to, I had to back that stuff out. So I, I created this goal that I was like, well, it would be, it would be awesome to do 12 houses. Right. Like thinking, I, I don't think I can probably do that. And then the belief is what is what really yeah. pushed. And, and when we when we talk, probably get to going from 12 to 67, that was right. it. It's like, you just remove the governor at that point. Yeah. yeah. And then kind of step two, again, I'm if you're not following, what is yeah. your Instagram page? People need to be following you. What is oh, it? Oh, it's, uh, it's Bill Allen REI. So Bill yeah. Allen REI. Yeah, go follow him. That's what I'm looking at right now. Because what happened after step two for you is you're going to develop a plan of action. Those are fancy yeah. words, but what's it really mean? Well, so, so the interesting thing is everybody this time of year sets goals and like everybody sets goals, right? So yes. like you have goals and we all pretty much have anybody that's listening to this right now and wants to build an eight figure business. They're all setting the exact same goal. Like we all have very similar goals, but not we, most people don't achieve them. Right. And it's because they, they don't build it back. So I, when I set a smart goal, I got to move all the way back. The only thing that matters is actually the actions. Right. So the actions exactly. that I need to take are what I focus on. I don't focus on the goal. So like, forget the goal. Like I want to, I want to have that vision, vision boards work, visualizing things in your head. It all works, but that's to keep you, to, to keep you, I don't want to jump ahead to step three, but I'm, I'm okay. kind of going to, it's to stay consistent. You yes. will be inconsistent if you forget the goal and the dream and the vision. So if you can remember, if you can see the vision, if it's already happened, like if it's real to you, like I, I was like, I can see like 12 houses. I, I can, like, there's 12, I flip 12 houses, one a month. I'm getting this kind of check, $30,000, $40,000 a month. Like I can start seeing that. What am I going to do with the money? That's the vision. And then I'm setting an action, which to if, if you're a real estate investor and you're listening to this, I'll tell you right now, your action is making offers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If you action make is making offers, offers, talking to more owners, right? Absolutely. That's it. Yeah. If you make more offers, you'll get more deals. I promise you. If all you do this entire year is say, I need to, I need to 5X, 10X the number of offers I make and you stay consistent with it, you will make more money. I yeah, now I, don't don't make I, don't make like stupid high offers where you're not you're going to lose money. You have to be smart with it, right? But, yeah. but if you make consistent and, and more offers, you will do more business. And so set the plan of action, like the action plan, and then be consistent with that because the the difference between people who achieve their goals and those who don't are those who are married to the action. Yes, that's it. Yeah, and this is something goal, married to the action. Yeah, this is something I really want people to appreciate is you have to look at your goals or your actions on a consistent basis. Like for me, I, I had a sales career for 20 years and we would always build funnels and I could track performance almost down to the dollar months in advance because I knew my ratios and I knew how much stuff was going in. And that's the key, right? In real estate, you're giving them the key, right? great offers, right? I talk about learning average, then good, then great, right? Great offers. You will get great deals. It's a numbers game. So, so you're absolutely right, but track it weekly. How yeah. many offers did you write? Right. I don't care what it is for you. Is it Monday? Is it Wednesday? Is it Friday? Track it. How many did you write this week? I wrote zero. Well, guess what? You're not going to do it. Well, I wrote seven. Well, great. Your goal is five. You're ahead of the game. So you got to track. You got to look back. I have a goals playlist on my channel where I share everything going on with in in my business from uh from these cards that I mail out right I'm trying to help people get their first deal why am I doing what I do because I want to give people golden tickets I have black cards for next that's my number one goal so I'm telling people every every week how are we doing how are we doing how are we doing track it you have to track the action you have to be consistent you're so right and and when you talk about consistency Michael you're a perfect example of consistency I remember when we first met on it was on Facebook Yep. It was like, come on my YouTube channel. Would you come on my YouTube channel? Come. You were everywhere you were. It was very much come on my YouTube channel. Like you would just, your comment is like, Hey, would you like to be interviewed on my YouTube channel for yep. years? Like guys, 
No joke. This is years later. This is probably like that. So that was before 2019. Yeah. So it's 18. It's been five years at least that I've been seeing Michael comment, would you like to come on my YouTube channel? And every message I get from him, he's like, <laughs> hey, I haven't talked to you in a while. Or he sees something that I'm talking about. And he's like, hey, do you want to come talk about this on my YouTube channel? Like, it's so consistent that th that's all you know. Like, that's all I know. And not only that, what you guys don't see is behind the scenes is inviting me to the interview. There's a very specific time that he's doing this consistently every single day. And he's like, these are my hours, Monday through Thursday here. So yeah. when can I, when can you come in? And yeah. I, I ran over on the last interview, last interview last week. And he's like, I got to move on to create content, dude. You're not here. I'm moving <laughs> on. And I couldn't even get in. So like that's consistency. So you guys know, like, and, and I don't know if you share this a, a lot behind the scenes, Michael, but like being like consistent, that's what this means. It means showing up even when you're sick, even when you don't yes. feel well. Even when you, even when you, you're, you're, you don't have the perfect content. It's not perfectly done. You don't quit. You just, you stay consistent and you are yeah. married to the actions. His action is like, I know this time. And the cool yep. thing is once your actions start happening and you start doing it over and over and over again, it becomes easy. In the oh, beginning, yeah. it's hard. It's like going to the gym, go to the yep. gym. And in the, like right now I haven't been to the gym in like three months and I'm, I'm like kind of weak and I'm going there. I used to be lifting a lot more weight than I am now. And I'm in there and the big guys that I, that I saw before that I would like talk to, they're like, dude's only doing like 140 pounds on the bench press. He was doing 225 three months ago. What's wrong? And, and, and in the beginning, you want to quit. You just want to leave. You're like, oh, it doesn't yeah. feel good. But then you start moving up. You start moving up. You get consistent. And then it's like, it becomes yeah. easy. Yeah, there you go. Well, take us to number four. Where do we go next? Yeah. So you got to be willing to take some risk. Yeah. So when, you, when you're thinking about this, a lot of times what stops us is like, is, you know, I, I, I think it was Tony Robbins that I heard say this, or it was somebody taking Tony. So Tony talks about, um, uh, he talks about certainty and uncertainty and, and the different, the, the four, the six human needs, but the four, um, the four main human needs and certainty is one where like, you know, the re result and outcome. Yeah. And, and what I heard was the person who wins, who the person who becomes most successful, the person who reaches their goals and the biggest goals, they're willing to step into uncertainty which like risk with the most certainty. So the person who can step into uncertainty with the most certainty wins. Yeah. And so what, what I, what I try to do and entrepreneurs, like we're, we're kind of like um, we're like calculated risk. What we do, like um, it, it seems risky to a lot of other people, but not to us. And so you got to be willing to jump in and take the risk because if you want to reap the reward, it, you have to walk through the risk. I, I just feel like you have to, like um, you have to do something different than other people are doing. You have to create something. You have to take a jump. You have to take a leap. Um, and, and so in there, um, I, I really think like you have, you're, you're married to the actions, you're taking the actions and there's going to be a point where you're tested and you're like, I don't know if the, I don't know if I should keep going. Yeah. And that's the point where it feels a little risky at that point. Like it's, it's a little uncomfortable and you just have to step into it and keep going. And that, yeah, that's, the, that's where you really achieve the big things. Yeah. The, the key for me here, and this is something I just try to get people. Cause again, I actually use this analogy. I haven't ever shared it with you. See if it plays, see if this plays. I think a lot of people want to get into real estate investing or just a better financial future. And I'm a sports guy. So I use sports analogies. I think there's a lot of people in the parking lot of a stadium, just sitting around with their friends tailgating, getting drunk, blah, 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 throwing stones, hate, you know, but, but they talk a good game, but they get around the wrong people and they just stay drunk and do nothing. Then there are people that get past that and actually get in the stadium. So they have some level of commitment, but they're in the stands. And then there's people on the field that are actually doing it. What I see my job as, is one rental at a time. I'm focused on getting people from the stands to the field. I think everybody has to make a choice. I, at this point, can care less about people screaming in the parking lot. There's so much hate and so much nonsense and fear. And some of those people are getting paid to preach fear. And I just, I can't do that. I'm not in the convincing business. But if you are brave enough or you want to see what's possible and you get to the stands, I'm your guy. I can help you. I've helped thousands of people get out of the stands and get one. I think getting writing one great offer changes. I don't even say getting one great deal, writing one great offer, having the confidence to write a great offer because you've done the work. You can tell somebody what average is. 
and you write a great offer, my job's done. You won. I can't, I can't make the seller say yes, but at, you have done your job. You wrote a great offer. When you do that once, you can do it again. And you can do it again. And you could do it again. So that's who I focus on. People getting out of the stance onto the field. What do you think? So I really like that. I actually wrote something down that, I don't know, maybe it serves you or the people listening. Um, the people in the in the parking lot, you got to convince. So you don't want to work with them. I feel like the people in the stands are somebody that you have to persuade, not convince, oh. but you're persuading them. And then there the people go. who are on the field, what you need to do with them is motivate them. Yes. So, so like, like those that. are your three levels. You got the convincing, the persuading, and the motivating. And so I agree, like I'd rather work with two and three. I'd rather work with the people that need to be persuaded because it's inside of them, right? It's inside of them. They're like, man, I wish I could be down on the field. And, and so they need to be persuaded to. And the people on the field, they just need to, they have the genius, they have the brilliance. And they just need to be motivated to keep going, like inspired and pushed and motivated. Yeah. And, and the people in the parking lot conv to convince somebody, it's like they're they're blaming other people just because they're, they're always going to be- They want excuses. I, I spent four years of this journey trying to help the biggest crowd. And that's the people in the parking lot. It is the worst use of my time. It is not something I enjoy. It's frustrating because you give everybody the keys and you ask them to take one step and they do nothing. And they just want to whine and complain. I'm like, okay, I'm done with people in the parking lot. If you get into the stadium, I'm your guy. I am, I'm done with people in the parking lot. They're just drunk assholes. <laughs> well, if you can find out who you're for and who you're not for, it's, yes. it's the best thing that can possibly happen in any business. Like you really figure out your market, your avatar, who they are, where they are, and, and how you can talk to them and, and your, what your ideal customer looks like. It's, it's gold. I love that. Convince, persuade, motivate. I, I am yeah. going to steal that. Thank you very much. You got it. It's all yours. <laughs> well, let's bring us home. What is the most, what is number five? Bring us home. Oh, the last one is just be disciplined. So be, be disciplined, never give up. But it, it's, it's easy to say to do this. So we talked about like being married to the actions and showing up when you're sick and all these things. Um, if you, if we go back to the gym analogy from before, right, you're in the gym. Uh, if it's like, you know, zero degrees outside and you, you went to bed late or your kids were up all night and five o'clock comes and the alarm goes off and you don't want to go to the gym. You're just going to hit the snooze button maybe and stay home. But if somebody's meeting you at the gym, you're going to show up at the gym because you don't want to let them down. You're, it's easier for you to let yourself down than it is to let somebody else down. And so when I get to be disciplined, never give up, like you might be like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm disciplined. Uh, you're not as disciplined as you would be with accountability. No, nobody is. Not a single human being out there. We will quit on ourselves before we can quit on others most of the time. And uh, so, so that's my biggest secret to this is having accountability, like a true accountability. And you talked about writing offers, like have it every week. Like I know my daily actions. I know my, at the end of the week, this is what I report on. If I did seven and I was only going to do five, that's great. But next week I'm still expecting you to do five. You don't yeah, get to yeah. do three to, go, to no. average it out. And so, <laughs> and you show up, you don't want to let those people down. So what you do is you work harder. You take more action ahead of a meeting like that. So I would try to find a group of that has consistent accountability that Agreed. you can show up with other people who are like-minded people. So the biggest thing for me, be disciplined, never give up. And, and I need help. Like I need help with that. When I put my goals out there and I like verbalize them and I put them out there and I show other people, it lights a fire in me. Yeah. If I just wrote them down here, even writing them down is great. But once you share them and other people are looking at you, and saying how you're doing. So that's the next step. And then the next step that's even deeper is every single week you show up with somebody and say, where are you yeah. at this week? Yeah, that's because one of the things that that I've loved and I followed your lead, right? I followed your lead around building a community. Uh, I started a, a private Facebook group just for one rental at a time because of what I saw you doing. And um, that's just, just, it's an amazing, happy place. People are winning. People are putting questions. People are struggling. People are helping. It's just a place to be accountable. And, and we're all moving forward together, right? We're all celebrating each other's victories. Again, we celebrate writing offers. I can't tell you how many times I've seen somebody say, Michael, or one, or they call it ORAT, right? It's short, one rental at a time, ORAT. ORAT family, I wrote my first offer. The seller said no, but it's a win. I'm like, yes, of course it's a win. You had never done that before. You wrote a great offer. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. Because once you do something once, you know you can do it again. So that's the power of being in a positive community. And I want to thank you for inspiring me 
to create that group. Bill, I know you have a YouTube channel that has just started and growing. What is it? Because people need to follow somebody I put on the Mount Rushmore of, of investors. I do. It's very, very small and just getting going, but I have big goals and big dreams. And I actually have a really cool concept. Like I'm flying people around in an airplane, in my airplane, I have an airplane and we're talking about business and uh, it might, it's, it's not all real estate people, but we're just talking about business, how they can grow and scale their business and how to make it relatable. You get somebody like Russell Brunson, who's got a billion dollar company called ClickFunnels. You get him in an airplane and he feels really comfortable. So he's willing <laughs> to up and talk about all kinds of stuff. He might not talk about on a regular podcast or that interview. Awesome. So, um, so I'm using my connections and things like that to, to do a cool show. That's not just entertaining, but also has some value. Um, it, and it's called, it's just Bill Allen. It's my name. And I think it's at Bill Allen, REI, uh, same yeah. as my Instagram, uh, handle. Yeah. So, um, Folks, do yourself a favor, follow him again. I, I, I don't, I don't say this lightly. Mount Rushmore has got what four presidents, five presidents on it. Uh, and Bill, uh, Bill Allen is, uh, on my Mount Rushmore of real estate investors. Bill, thank you so much. Thanks, Michael.